in this video i'm going to show you how to get started with google Earth engine visual collection so basically show you how to um, use vector data in google Earth engine first let's open uh, a browser and then go to the google Earth engine homepage a platform documentation and then click get started on the left here uh, you will see um, a very comprehensive uh, documentation and in general people get started with image and image collection and then move to a uh, feature uh, geometry feature and feature collection but uh, for this video we're just going to get started from here first in because later when we do for example image or image collection when we try to find out the images most likely you will need to have an area of interest right you need to have an ROI or AOI where do those uh, area of interest come from most likely it will you'll be from some geometry or physical collection or a set file on your computer so how can you actually um, upload the data to Google's engine or you can use some uh, existing data set uh, within Google's engine so we we're just going to start from this one uh, first and you will see here we have geometry a feature and also feature collection so this corresponds to traditional GS data for example uh, within a shape file you can have uh, the polygon the shape so those are the geometry just the vertices uh, the coordinates of the vertices but you can also open the attribute table to see the attributes so each row within the attribute table uh, is one feature and all of them combined together becomes a feature collection so these terms uh, if you are not familiar I expect you just uh, think about correspondingly uh, in those uh, traditional GS data next let me let's um, go ahead and download some data so you can go to my github account uh, here and I have a repository called data so you can just click repository and then search data and you can click this one so I have some common one that I use for all kind of uh, demos if you want you can click the code button and then just download as a zip file so i'm going to download this one it's been downloaded to my downloads folder and once it's done then i can uh, copy this one and then move to uh, other folder so let's see how long uh, that is okay it's done then you can double click then in here so these are some of the data that uh, we want i can just copy this one and let's move to for example uh, documents and uh, GE so within here I can just paste the folder and then move all the data here then uh, next I'm going just to change the folder name to uh, data okay so right now we have some sample data that we can use and so next I'm just going to open uh, QGS uh, if you use ArcGIS you can do that as well or any other GS uh, software packages uh, QGS is open source so you can just google and then just uh, QGS and you should be able to let me just do it here just type qgs okay and then download qgs so from here you can select for example either this one or this one so i i, I just downloaded this one and then install so uh, you're welcome to that but that's not required so i'm just going to show you some concepts how it can correspond to uh, gs data vector data to earth engine feature collection so i'm just going to open um, an empty uh, map and maybe i can just also open for example some base map so in here next i can load some vector data for example i'm going to check maybe the us and i want the us uh, states so i can click this one us uh, states doc shp move this one and now you can see it's uh, being loaded to the map so next we can just open the xp table to take a look right so click right click open attribute table and this is the attribute table right so as you can see we have two columns right when i click any of those it's going to be highlighted uh, on the map so for example this is california right uh, and then the id and also the name so how do we actually correspond this one to uh, google's engine uh, uh, the vector data so if i come back to here one more time right geometry feature and feature collection so if you see from the map in here so uh, the shape it shows this is the geometry and the 
here one line this is one feature right but we have all the states so all the states together is a collection so that will be a feature collection so this is the corresponding concept if you uh, use google engine so if you want uh, you can upload the data set to your earth engine account so for example i can once i'm here i can go to platform and then call editor from the call editor uh, i can go to uh, the access tab and then from here i can upload data so i can just type uh, click new and uh, table upload right so you can click this one uh, swift files and then just select so next go to the folder uh, where the data being located so I'll come back to here and i say us I, and then i can do here for example us uh let's check a couple of those you'll be ssp so we don't need the geojson so just this four dbf erj ssp shx right that's all and then just hit open it's automatically um create this so similarly you can from your access right you can just directly upload everything to uh, under your folder right now my folder is empty so i don't have anything yet but i can also just uh, create a new folder let's say public and then uh, uh slash oh you need to oh you need to create on folder first anyway let me just um i can leave it as, as it is so just maybe you can just uh try this and then let me click this one all you need to just hit upload and then upper right corner task this one right now showing it's being uh, ingested so basically the data is being upload uploaded but uh, because in order to use a uh, cloud computing uh, google's engine use some kind of uh, um uh, techniques so um that behind the scene is going to make the data uh to be can be uh, faster access and uh, process uh, we can come back later but for now uh, this is uh, you, you can, we can just wait so next i'm going to show you here how we can um, use the python api to uh, create uh, an interactive map okay so in the previous video i already show you how to create um, the conda environment so next i'm just going to show you here go to anaconda anaconda prompt right so you see Okay, so in the previous video, I already show you how to install Miniconda and GMAP. And so once you have installed GMAP, uh, you can open the Anaconda prompt and then Conda EMV list to take a look at the name of the environment. So we use the name GE. Once you uh, know the name, you can Conda activate GE, hit enter, then just type Jupyter Notebook and it will open a notebook on your browser so this is where we have it now then we can go to whatever folder you want to uh, create the notebook for example uh, GE right so once we're here I can create a new one for example Python 3 then we can change the name for example uh, you, you can do whatever name you want I can say just feature section okay so this is an empty notebook and next uh, we can start um create an interactive map and then to load some data uh from google's engine let me see if this one finished yet uh, it's still running uh, sometimes you just need to refresh uh, okay okay it's actually it's, it's, it's done so it's already in here later i'm going to show you how we can use this data set but for now let's go back to here okay i right, close it's done i finished okay so this is the empty notebook and all we need to do is just to start import uh, ee our uh, earth engine and then import ge map okay so this is the ge map package that we installed last time uh, and the earth engine is uh, basically a dependency of our ge map okay so once we have imported this uh, python packages then we can start creating an interactive map so all we need to just here yeah, app case map equal to ge map dot uh, map okay so if you're new to uh python or new to uh programming uh you just think about like we have all kind of packages out there so think about your iphone uh, you have uh, on app store you can install all kind of uh packages from the app store right once you install the app then you can basically utilize all kind of functions uh, of the app and so this is basically what the gmap package is for 
you can create an interactive map so and then you can start doing some kind of cloud computing utilizing uh, google Earth engine uh, cloud uh, data in, in the google Earth engine data catalog so again uh, for this one here is just the name of the variable so we create a map and then we assign the map to a variable so later we can actually reference uh, this map just think about like every human being has a name right for example people in the u.s has a social security number and then we can use that as a unique identification that later when we need to reference somebody we can use a social security number or a driver license or whatever uh, a unique id so this is the, the name of the variable and then just hit alt enter on your keyboard so once we create a map then the next step will be to show the map so all we need to just type uh, map uh, it's showing here so again so you can just put any other character m or n or whatever you, you want you can it's doing the same thing okay so but as a convention it's just going to use the uppercase map so that we will be consistent uh, with the javascript api okay so once we have the map next let's load some data so if you click the icon uh, upper left corner uh, this one here and then click the, the data tab so in here you can search any data set you like it's the same similar to what you do in here if you go to the earth engine and then data set so you can also use the search uh, box here to search any data set but um, i already implement this one in uh, gmap so you can come uh, easily just uh, search any data set within here so in this example we're going to use the u.s census data so all you need to do you can just type uh, census and then hit enter right so once you hit enter you will see a list of uh, census data available we are going to use for example the census states but you also have county you have rows you can have other data set uh, more details so we're just going to use this one uh, census state 2018 once you are uh, select that one from the list you should be able to see here the sample so for example uh, the description and how you can use this one so this is the unique id right ee talk visual collection uh this is the same one like similar to what we do using uh, qgs you open that one on the map so this is the unique id uh things in the cloud so uh you need to know the cloud id so this is the cloud id you can click the link here to open the the data set uh using the, navigate to the earth engine data catalog and you can see more information you can also see some sample source code here but this one is for javascript uh, not for python so and let's come back next uh very easy just click import and see what happened it automatically create a new cell beneath the map and then you can just hit uh, run or uh, alt enter or control enter to execute but uh, i want to change this one to a better name uh, because by default it only used the name with the code data set and then three random characters so i want to change this one to just maybe let's say uh states and then similarly uh this is the basically uh the the pointing to the uh visual collection pointing to the vector data and then we assign this one to a variable so next we can add this variable to the map so basically add the data to show it on the map but you need to make sure that you change them together and the second parameter is how you want to visualize but for now uh, we just uh, we don't need to provide anything just uh, uh curly brackets using the default one and this is with the name right so the name you want to show is a layer so i can change it to us states and then just hit uh, alt enter la la you see now we have the data load it onto the map so compared to what we did at the beginning right i need to go to my github i need to download the data and then uh, unzip the data and then you can load the data uh, using google's and are uh, you in uh, onto qgs right but if you see from this one here we haven't downloaded really anything uh, everything is in the cloud so this one's come from the earth engine data catalog and then we display on the map right there's nothing you need to download so I can restart the output just to show you one more time right so basically just a few lines of code and then you can just run all it's going to um access to the data and this data is not just for displaying uh you can also analyze and 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 and, and to use that to do all kind of a spatial analysis so for example uh you can go to the uh the icon upper right corner and then click this one identifier uh, 
are all inspector so once you click you can come to here inspect so you'll be able to see all the attribute table so you will see this one like us states whatever i click for example click uh california okay so you can see the land area the water area and also uh the name also the um state the usps uh, uh, uh code all right so those are the information basically the, the attribute column and it's the same like in here so that one has more more information so the one i downloaded from my github only has two columns but this one has more so all right so then you then can click and click you can click 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 similarly you can also uh, customize you can change the color if you want so i can see uh click this one and then you can click the layers uh the, the tab uh, layer tabs you can change the opacity if you want you can turn the layer on and off okay you can also customize the color so you can click uh, this icon and then you can change the color for example opacity uh, opacity or the color so this is the outline the color representing the outline so we can still use that for example i can change to maybe a red color and then so the field color uh, opacity right now you see some kind of transparent so i can totally change this one to zero then you'll be fully transparent just hit apply you should be able to see this one just uh, transparent so but you need to turn off the other layer so because when we create uh, the uh, visualization uh, it basically create a new layer so if you turn off the original one now you have this one like directly uh, if you want you can also customize i can change for example style by attribute by the way you can change the line or uh, type if you want so i can say maybe dotted apply and now you see this one is um, the line sorted but you might not see this one clearly uh, let me change it to solid i style by um, attribute and i can change this one for example i want to style uh, by name or you can buy area or whatever you want so if by name and you can see all the attribute being loaded here and i can just hit apply uh, you don't really need to do anything oh by the way you need to switch this one to non uh, opacity otherwise you won't see what it is being uh, feel okay so seems uh, pretty simple and straightforward maybe change this one to black color and then hit apply if you want you can change the opacity uh, right so it's actually very easy and uh, um, intuitive to use uh, similar to in QGS or ArcGIS you can also change customize the color uh, so it's up to you how you want to do that I can also change to uh, switch to other color scheme for example maybe to 10 and then you can stack those from the color so it has i think more than 200 color for you to choose from just hit apply just you hit close and you have this uh customized okay so this is actually this one uh, took me a while to implement um it looks pretty simple but uh behind the scene it, it contains uh, uh, more than 1000 lines of code actually to implement this okay so now once you have the data how about this uh, we want to uh, we want to filter the data for example we want to uh, select some data they say i right now i just want um they say i want texas i just want to display texas so how can we do that again you can click the identifier and then from this this one here right so this is where you can do the filtering because you know the attribute right so similarly in uh, um uh, in qgs you can open the attribute table and then you can do the filtering using the attribute table for example uh let me see if you can here clear everything right so you'll be they say texas right so you need to select this one and now it's being highlighted but uh in in uh, google Earth engine there's no interface for you to select anything so you need to write source code in this case how can we do that so we have the data so we need to do the filter um, and this is how things work in google's engine if you want to select something from a, a feature collection uh, you need to utilize either select by location or select by attribute so the first method i'm going to show you is to select by attribute so how can we select for example texas or california or any state out of this one so in that way you need to look at the attribute what kind of attribute it has uh, so certainly in this case we can just select by name right so if we know how to filter 
if the name equal to Texas, then that's the one that we want. So how can we do that? So we can just say come to here. We need to define a new variable. So the variable uh, is going to save the one so that we can plot that one on the map. So Texas equal to will be your original data. So the original one that we used earlier, that one is called states. So again, states dot and then filter. So the hit filter and then uh so this one the filter what kind of filter we're going to use uh, for now uh if you if you not need more information you can come to we have a filters sections in here not in here but if you want you can go to the the references a uh, reference and then go to clients then from here you should be able to see e the filter so there are a lot of filters uh, you can use in this example, we're going to use this one, e dot filter eq. eq means equal. So you have the name, you have the value. So the name, basically the name of the column. The value is whatever value you want to use. So if you want to see, if you want to, you can also see the example here. But I'm going to come back to my example. So we're going to use e dot uh, filter dot eq, and then parentheses. So within the parentheses. We're going to enter the name of the column. So the name of the column is actually this one. So it's called a name, right? So you just need to put double quotes or single quotes and then name. So make sure that it's the same uh, uppercase because this is the name of the column. And then Omar, double quotes again, and Texas, right? So in this way, we, we select uh, Texas and then we can display Texas. So again, select uh, map.add layer and then passing the variable of the name, uh, curly brackets, and then, uh, the name of the layer. So we can say Texas, right? Alt enter. Do you see this one? Uh, so right now, this one is slightly. Uh, yeah, uncheck this one. Let me turn off other data layers. Right, so you have Texas in here. So it's very simple and easy actually. Right, so you can change this one to any other um, uh, 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 other states. For example, if you want to select uh, California or other states, you can do that as well. So let me try the other one. So copy, paste. Let's say I just want California. You can change the name of the variable. And then this one will be California. You can also change the name. Paste, copy, paste, and then hold enter. Oh, so I also need to change the one. So, okay. So, we see now we have two, right? So, we have we select two Oregon's from original database. This is how you do selection using um, Google's engine, a uh, feature collection. So this is select by attribute, but you can also select by location. So let me show you. Um, if you if you don't, for, let's say I want, for example, this uh southern United States. So I can draw a rectangle in here. This is a couple of states. I can just draw some of those in here. So right now, this is a polygon that I draw in here. I want to select all states intersecting this polygon. Uh, can we do that? Uh, of course. But you need to figure out the coordinates. Uh, if you're using GMap, uh, you can just use this one. Um, map dot user ROI. Okay, and then if you just uh, Alt Enter, it will show you the geometry. So this is the geometry. That's you can also see the coordinates uh, in here. But this one is basically the uh, Earth Engine uh, Race API. So uh, you don't really see the uh, basically the command that's sent to the Google Earth Engine server but uh, in google's engine python api if you want to see the content you always need to dot get info and then hit alt enter now it will show you for example this is a polygon and then it has uh, coordinates uh, the five coordinates right so from the, um, the polygon in here five coordinates so we can actually use this one to filter um, the original uh, state polygons right so this is the physical collection we want to select all of those like intersecting with this one so what we need to do we can say for example select it so this is a new variable that we're going to save the um the one we're going to select so it will be equal to uh states dot filter if you if you type just two uh, characters and then hit tap on your keyboard 
it's going to show up uh, some uh, options for you to select in this example we're going to use the filter bounds so the filter bounds means um you want to select by location so you, anything that intersect with whatever you put inside the parentheses then you'll be selected so in this case we want to use the ROI so you can certainly use for example I can say I can define an ROI equals to map dot user ROI or you can directly use the ROI uh, it's up to you so uh, we can maybe execute this one and I say for example ROI uh, hit alt enter then we can say map dot add layer selected uh, clear brackets right so this will be uh, us for example south and then hit alt enter take a look at this you have this one right now uh, being selected um, all the polygons intersecting with your polygons so this is the second way uh, select by location so earlier the one is select um, by attribute there's also something that might commonly use for example if you want to select multiple states uh, together uh, all at once uh, you can also do that as well so they say i want to select uh, utah and colorado together but can you do that in one line um, you can so let me show you they say i want the um two states example A couple of states are up to you so it depends on the list i can just do for example they say uh waste a mid waste a states equal to will be states dot again it's all still going to use the filter but in this case we're going to use the different filter so if you want to select multiple uh, polygons that share some attribute you can use this one e dot filter list in list E dot filter in list and then the left field will be the name of the column the right value will be the uh the list of values you want to select from so the string and the list come back to here right filter so it'll be e e dot filter dot in list and then parentheses so the first one will be the name of your column so still it will be the name and the next one will be a list so in here we can just type this one here uh, square brackets and then inside we can put whatever we want so uh, we want utah utah and then comma double quotes again oh you need uppercase and lowercase so you cannot use all uppercase so utah and the next one will be colorado so e o a o r e a r o oh okay D O L O R A T O. Okay. And then Alt Enter. Once we have this one, we can add that to the map. So waste. And then curly brackets. US waste. Alt Enter. Okay, so now you have two all at once, right? So pretty simple. You can you can you can add more if you want. I can also do for example uh, Nevada. Uh, together so you only need to do the come back to here and then comma double quotes on N E V A Nevada N E V A D A enter enter now you have three all together right so this is how you can select um by attribute select by location right so a couple of ways you can do the future using just a few lines call uh it, it might seem kind of complicated uh but once you get used to it uh, this is very uh, efficient so you don't need to download anything but you can filter the data and then we can also use this polygon to filter uh image or image collection so uh, you can select from millions of uh, images uh, without having to download anything so uh, just to keep it in mind yet uh, if you're new to programming this might look uh, intimidating because you need to write a lot of lines of code but if you see from here this is very easy to understand uh, you just uh, have a variable and then you can apply something to that variable and then within there you just pass in the uh, parameters that's it so you need to think about the structure 
and once you're familiar with the structure um, most of the stuff are basically uh, very similar and uh, we'll talk about more uh, later in the next video but uh, in this it's all for this video uh, just showing you how to low an image collection uh to the to here and i think earlier i also showed you how you can uh, upload the data to your earth engine account so uh, similarly we can also do it in here uh, i can show you for example once you upload the data to your account uh, you can also copy this one so this will be your unique id right so i can then can come back to here i can also low low this one to uh, the map so i can show you for example i can say this is um my state okay equal to e dot uh free subtraction uh if you hit tab and then parentheses double quotes paste so this is the one that's uh from my account it's not the public one so this is my old data so if you have any swap on your computer you want to use that with google's engine you can upload and then use this way to access so okay so alt enter then i can map so add layer my date right Ooh. a curly brackets and then you can say my date or my data whatever alt enter come back to here all right so you also have this one and i can turn up all other data layers like this one and this is my data the data that i add right so and then you can use the uh inspector click you should be able to see this one so this is the same as you see from using qgs or arcgs to show the attribute table right so you click click you can also turn on the previous one right so you can compare the differences there might be some uh boundary because my the data I uploaded is a simplified version so you might see uh, it is slightly different but when you click your mouse uh, all the uh, visible layer you will be able to see right so this is this is the one from the earth engine data catalog this is the one that i uploaded but you can use both at the same same time so um programmatically they are the same you can also use this one to filter um uh, to select image select uh, um, um polygons from the visual collection right but you just need to figure out the uh the column name so in this case here the name is like lowercase missouri uh, it's not uppercase so you need to uh, pay attention so similarly for example i want to select california from the data that i uploaded you can also do that in here i can say california 2 equal to now it will be the same it's just like this one we used earlier right so i can just maybe just copy this one and then paste in here but we want to change the name of the variable don't be don't use the same as the previous one so and then you need to change the here e dot filter so this is right now because the column names are different so uh, in here is lowercase so you need to use the lowercase come back to here lowercase right and then again you see a layer 2 i can california 2 alt enter and we can come back to here to take a look see if this uh being loaded like california 2 you can turn up all the other layers oh interesting so it's not here let me take a look uh, come back to here let me uh inspect take this one c a e oh it's uh, my state okay i'm sorry so because i changed the name of the variable you need to also change this one and then shift enter let's take a look at okay so now it's being selected back to here back not this one so it's being selected right and then you can use the inspector to inspect if you want right so that's the name and california okay so this is how you can uh select data uh and uh use the earth engine vector data there are a lot of more things that we can introduce but uh i will save it for the next video okay so that's all for this video i'll see you in the next one take care